Hey everybody, it's the Commodore from the Clan of the Grey Wolf, and you are watching the weekly Ringer series here on clanofthegreywolf.com. Now I've got a lot to do today. Uh, as you saw, I had a little bit of trouble getting back to the video series this week, being so exhausted from the travel that was involved getting down to the Escapist Expo last weekend. But that's okay. We're back in full force this week. You know, a couple months ago, going to the Escapist Expo in, in Durham wouldn't have, you know, would have been a kind of blip on the radar. It would have been very easy to accomplish. But now that I live halfway across the country, um, it, it's a it's a very different kind of deal. So uh, I underestimated how very exhausted and tired it would make me to travel that far and to do all that kind of travel in, in a weekend. But in any case, we, uh, I'm back and uh, definitely um, in full force this week to give you another edition of the Weekly Ringer. And a, a good one, I would say. There's a lot to talk about. Um, last, last time I gave you a, a question about the Genesis. And we, I, we haven't really focused a lot on the Genesis here in the Weekly Ringer series, even though I think it's very much fundamental to how many of us came to be accustomed to video games in the first place and at the very least was something that most of us, if not all of us, really grew up with uh, or had some dealings with in the past. And it's always cool to talk about those things that were part of our gaming experiences when we were, when we were younger. Um, I think there's a lot to talk about there. So, um, you know, we'll do, I'll do the, the, you guys know the drill by now, right? And if you don't, here's how it goes. Basically, I'll talk about your, the answers that you guys gave me last week um, about the, the Genesis question about the best Genesis game, as a matter of fact. I will then go and give you my uh, two cents in the matter. Sometimes that ends up being a lot more like four cents or ten cents. But in any case, I'll give you my two cents on uh, what I think about it. And then um, I will ask you a question next week that, will, that I think will, um, will ask you about how you're going to be spending your money this holiday season. Um, at, least, at least a part of it, let's just say that. And that in the business is what we call a teaser, so that makes, means I need to move on to the beginning of the show, which is what I always do, which is welcome our new members. This week I think we only had one new member that I uh, at least caught uh, on to, so I always like to welcome people to the community. This is a community-driven show, so we need you guys there to be able to comment or else I get put out of business and relegated to, you know, obscurity and trying to figure out what other kind of video series we should be making here in the Clan of the Grey Wolf, which some of you might argue is a good thing. But anyway, please continue to comment uh, because that's, that's how we, uh, we keep going. Anyway, I say all of that to say this. Welcome to Foreign Gamer Girl. Um, welcome to the, uh, to the community. Um, very straightforward name. I think I probably know a little bit about you by the fact that you, know, you have your handle the way that it is, but I won't go into all that. Just suffice it to say, welcome to the Clan of the Grey Wolf's uh, weekly Ringer community, and uh, I hope to hear from you in um, in you know comment form uh, in the future as well. So, with that being said, the question I gave you all last week was about the best Genesis game of all time, and this is a tough question, guys. I mean, there were there were a couple of things that surprised me um, after I asked this question. One is that there were really so many unique, good video games for the Genesis that I think were, as I say, unique. And what I mean by that is that they weren't just clones of what was on the Super Nintendo, or they weren't just um, uh, simultaneous releases to what was on the Super Nintendo. There was actually quite a bit of you know uh, of games that were unique to the Genesis and and only on the Genesis and, and exclusive to the Genesis that really were very good and really are worth a, a second third fourth look um, and that was why I was I was really surprised um, by by the list because I, I found myself agreeing time and again um, you know a, a, another thing to to think about I was a little surprised at the hate for the Genesis I think. Um, I have to say that uh, I completely and totally disagree about the hate for the Genesis. I think the Genesis was an awesome system, and I think um, I think it did a lot of things that exposed uh, video gaming to whole whole new worlds of how to really exist and uh, and what kind of games could be made that continued to flourish throughout uh, throughout the 90s, and um, you know. I think Sega, even in many ways, failed to live up to the, the way the Genesis did business with subsequent systems and really only kind of got back to its core, I think, with the Dreamcast, which I thought was going to do a lot of the same stuff 
and uh, of course just kind of ran out of runway for Sega at that point. If the follow-up to the Genesis had been even seven or eight years later and had been um, something akin to the Dreamcast rather than seeing the Saturn and the, the, the add-ons like the Sega CDs and the 32Xs and so on and so forth, if that, if that had been more of a, of a fluid transition, I think Sega would probably still be around today as a hardware manufacturer, not just a software manufacturer. So I was surprised to see the hate, because I thought that, that the Genesis, even though there were brutal wars in, uh, between the Genesis and the Super Nintendo, um, and even if the Super Nintendo is considered to be, and I, I can't say that I disagree, uh, a superior system in almost every way, uh, you have to respect what the Genesis was doing particularly in the period between you know, when the Genesis gets launched and when the Super Nintendo gets launched. Because there is a, there is a, couple, there is a year or so, two years in there, where it's just uh, nothing else was happening at that point. Nintendo was, was, you know, if anything, I see it as Sega kind of being that prod to help Nintendo do the next thing, um, rather than kind of keep cashing in on the NES, which at the time was, uh, you know, was a little bit long in the tooth, let's say. Strange that we can say that when, you know, the, the Xbox 360, for example, has been around longer uh, than, the, than the NES had at that time. But that's a different story. In any case, <clears throat> you guys came up with a lot of great answers for the Genesis, now that I've given away some of the, the surprises that I've seen. But as I go down this list, I think it's safe to say all of these are great games. And all of these would be on my top... 10, 15, 20, um, you know, games of, of all time for the Genesis. So I think I, I heartily agree with every single one of them. I'll talk about, you know, it, it was tough at this, in, it, this week to go and single out comments because what ended up happening was I ended up just kind of writing down the games and I, I, and I just went, yeah, I mean, this warrants, you know, being talked about. And several of you brought up the same kind of comments I would have if I were just going to talk through those games. So I just decided to kind of keep... Uh, what you guys uh, contributed in terms of the games and just talk about them. So I'll do that. Khog143, which apparently I did get the name right last week, which is a great thing, nominated Gunstar Heroes. And Gunstar Heroes is an awesome game. Um, one that is almost, is, is very replayable. Is a fun kind of arcadey jump in, easy to, to play, easy to get accustomed to. Uh, like I say, arcade-style game that is tremendously fun and actually originates from <clears throat> some of the original creators of Contra, maybe even the original creators of Contra. I think it wasn't, I mean, because Konami made Contra, obviously, with Konami code, but I think a couple people actually branched off from Konami to make Gunstar Heroes for Sega, and it was, uh, in every way, I think, superior to Contra, which makes sense um, in many ways, but... But, uh, but it was superior Contra, and it had a, a really fun feel to it, and the animation style was a little bit different. You know, the, the, it had that kind of Genesis, larger-than-life kind of feel to it, which was never really a part of the NES, uh, which felt at that point a little more kind of blocked out, uh, where the Genesis kind of felt like it was coming alive a little bit more when it was launched. Um, and, and Gunstar Heroes is a perfect example of that. If you look at something like Contra, then look at something like Gunstar Heroes, you have a very good example of how the NES did things as a kind of mode of business and how the, the Genesis did things as a mode of business, complete with all of the trappings of things that I don't like about the Genesis, including the very tinny, um, metallic kind of sound chip um, that was used in the Genesis that really um, hurt their ability in many ways to... Um, make meaningful sound, and this, this is something that the Super Nintendo did unbelievably well. I don't think there's any conversation about the fact that the Super Nintendo had by far the most superb sound uh, that was available at the time, and it's one of the things that separated them and made them, you know, and, and put them a cut above. I think it's very clear to look at the Genesis, and Gunstar Heroes is an example, really all these games are examples, um, of how Sega wasn't really thinking of that much about how sound and music were going to be the biggest or one of the biggest selling points to the games that they made. Uh, in my opinion, editorializing, but just how I feel about it. Nintendo from the very beginning was very much thinking about how sound, uh, in the Super Nintendo at least, in the Super Nintendo was going to be a fundamental part of what they did. And as a result, they were, they were much more expansive, the capabilities were much better. And it wasn't kind of singularly uh, and kind of metallically locked down like the, uh, like the Genesis was. 
But Gunstar Heroes is a great is a great uh, is a great game, and I think you would be hard pressed to find anyone's list of the best games on Genesis that didn't have that as a top five, maybe you know top ten for sure, but top t- top five absolutely. Gunstar Heroes is uh, an awesome game. Lord of Nothing talked about Sonic 2, and you know a couple of you talked about Sonic, and uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but I, I think Sonic 2. Sonic 2 probably is my favorite. Um, it's it, <clears throat> probably because when um, when I finally got so I never owned a Genesis, but but uh, uh, one of my cousins in my family who visited quite often did, and he got the system at a time when they were bundling Sonic and Sonic 2, I think, at the same time. And so um, if you were going to choose between those games. You, know, you you would play Sonic 2 pretty much all the time. Sonic 1 was on constant display at retail, so you could go into any Kmart or, or, or whatever, and, and Sears or what have you, now they're the same company, interestingly enough, But uh, and, and jump onto a Genesis and play the original Sonic. But Sonic 2 was uh, superior in almost every way to the original Sonic, and it was uh, fun, and the music was better, and I thought I liked the level design a lot better. So Sonic 2 um, is probably my favorite Although there's uh, there's plenty to talk about uh, and more to come from Sonic later on, but I thought it was a good suggestion. I you know <clears throat> some of you mentioned the original Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, you know I would say that the only way the original Sonic makes the list is if you're just talking from a kind of purely nostalgic point of view. Um, in that Sonic is unique to to Sega. Obviously, there's no competition from from Nintendo there. Um, and, you know, it's Sonic, right? It's the first Sonic game. It might not be the best one, but it's the first time, you know, you, you got to experience, you know, the theme music and the kind of speed that Sonic had to offer, which is cool. So, you know, some people like the first experience they have with a game, with a game system or with a game franchise, and if that's the case, then Sonic 1's probably your favorite. But I think if we're being honest about the best games in the series for Genesis, I think Sonic 2 is has got to be at the top, maybe over the top. Maybe it is the best. Um, at least it's my favorite. Red Mage. And, you know, here's another surprise. I'll, I'll say this another surprise before I jump in. Red Mage nominated Fantasy Star 4. Again, a game that will have to be in the top 10 of every Genesis list that there is out there. And, and guys, check me on that. But I, I, don't, I can't imagine a Genesis list that wouldn't have Fantasy Star 4 on it. Um, but in any case... Another surprise I have was, so I always think of the Super Nintendo as being really dominated by the great era, the golden era of, of, of RPGs, specifically JRPGs, um, because it's just something that I associate with the Super Nintendo. It's just so, so good in, at, at, at those experiences. And one thing that gets lost in the fray a lot of the time is that the Genesis actually had some very good RPGs on it. Fantasy Star 4 um, is one of those games. And um, there, are, there are any number of different reasons why Fantasy Star 4 is on here. I like, one of the things I like is the kind of almost cutscene mentality um, that goes into, it's, it's almost like a comic strip presentation um, that I thought was actually really, really cool. Um, Fantasy Star does this in, in a very interesting way. It, so, you, with something like that, you see the Genesis that, that actually has something like a cutscene, but it, it lacks the capability to do what we now know as a cutscene, you know, with something like Final Fantasy VII and the like, um, where you have full motion video or, a, you know, a, a kind of full cinematic cutscenes. And the, the Genesis obviously couldn't do that. The Super Nintendo couldn't do that. So what they had to do was kind of find interesting ways to present the material. And I thought Fantasy Star 4 did a fantastic job of that. It's engaging, it's fun. It's a little bit too... Um, I, I don't even know how to say it. It's, it's a, it's, for my taste, so I like the localization on something like the Super Nintendo a lot better for most of the Super Nintendo games. The localization on Fantasy Star, uh, the whole Fantasy Star series was still a little questionable. You could tell Sega was definitely more... more um, comfortable uh, uh, holding on to more of the Japanese roots um, than I think the super the, than the Nintendo localizers were and for some people that they love that that's fantastic for me it was a little bit limiting but in any point Fantasy Star 4 great suggestion absolutely belongs in the list and uh, 
I think fantasy, the whole Fantasy Star series is, again, indicative of, of the Genesis, indicative of the Sega experience and what they believe um, you should be doing. And 